Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to continue our read through of the Animal Atlas and we're going to read about amphibians. So let's just dive right in with some amphibian facts. Here we go. This is a big book. I have a small desk. Doing the best I can. Am we go. All right. The first amphibians evolved from fish and moved on to land more than 300 million years ago. That's the strangest typo we've ever seen in a book, but okay. Today, most amphibians move between land and water. They are found throughout the world and most commonly in moist, freshwater habitats like woodlands and rainforests. So what is an amphibian? They are vertebrates. Like their fish ancestors, all amphibians have an internal skeleton made of bone. They are cold-blooded. The body temperature of, an, of amphibians fluctuates with that of the air and water around them. They lay eggs. Most amphibians lay soft eggs, but some give birth to live young. They have aquatic young. The young hatch and stay for a time as tadpoles in water, eventually turning into amphibious adults. And they have moist skin. Water passes through an amphibian's thin, moist skin, allowing it to breathe underwater. Let's see what types of amphibians there are. There are 8,000. 250 types of amphibians. Of those, 7,280 are frogs and toads. Frogs and toads are the largest group of amphibians. Scientifically, frogs and toads belong to the same animal group, but frogs typically have smoother skin. 760 are salamanders and newts. Salamanders and newts are biologically very similar animals. However, salamanders spend more time on land, while newts spend more time in water when breeding. And 210 are Cassilians, which I think that's how it's pronounced. Cassilians are small snake-like amphibians with no limbs and tentacles on their heads. They spend most of their lives underground, eating insects and worms. Some species live in water and have a tail fin for swimming. Let's see some extreme habitats. These unique amphibians can withstand the toughest conditions, from icy winters to the darkest caves. Water-holding frogs. Water-holding frogs have adapted to harsh Australian deserts. They burrow underground and form a waxy cocoon from layers of skin, which retains moisture necessary for survival. Here are olms. Olms are blind aquatic salamanders that live in the caves of Slovenia and Croatia. They have excellent smell and hearing, which is helpful when foraging for food such as snails. And crab-eating frogs. Crab-eating frogs are able to tolerate saltier habitats than other amphibians. Native to Southeast Asia, this frog mainly eats insects, but it also preys on crabs, hence its name. Nearly 50% of all amphibians are threatened due to water pollution, habitat destruction, and the introduction of invasive species see the frog life cycle. The most frogs undergo a dramatic physical change from a newborn to an adult through several distinct stages, a process known as metamorphosis. First they start as frog spawn. After frogs mate, 
the female lays the eggs in water as a clump called frog spawn. Clear jelly protects the black dot in the middle, which will become the tadpole. Here are the tadpoles. After about 10 days, tadpoles begin to move inside the eggs before hatching. Over the next nine weeks, they will develop the ability to swim and eat. Then they are a froglet. After about nine weeks, the tadpole starts to resemble a frog, with hind and front legs and a pointed head. The long tail will also shorten to a mere stub. And then we have a frog. At 12 weeks, it is almost a fully formed frog and can leave the water. When it is an adult, it can mate and have young of its own. And it's continuing the frog life cycle. The biggest amphibian, the South China giant salamander, can grow 6 feet, or 1.8 meters long, about the length of four domestic cats. That's a big salamander. The smallest amphibian is the Pedophrynomoensis, a frog from Papua New Guinea. It's no bigger than a fly, up to 5 sixteenths of an inch. 7.7 .7 milliliters, millimeters long, not milliliters, it's not liquid. Island frogs. Some frogs live on only one island, where the conditions, the weather, and habitat to food are just right. Look at this, Solomon Island leaf frog. Solomon Island leaf frogs resemble the color and shape of leaves on the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific. Curiously, they hatch from eggs as fully developed frogs. And the gardener's Seychelles frogs, how cute. Gardener's Seychelles frogs are one of the tiniest frogs in the world, growing just two, what is that? Three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Living in the Seychelles of, off the eastern edge of Africa, their habitat is threatened by wildfires. Venomous amphibians. Of all the amphibians, caecilians are probably the most mysterious because they are hard to find in their burrows. However, some experts think these curious creatures, such as the giant caecilian, could have venomous saliva. There are only very few known venomous amphibians, such as Brazil's Greening's frog. These are kind of creepy. I mean, I love snakes, but like creature that looks like a worm snake, and it's not either. I don't know how I feel about that. The highest amphibian is Bollinger's lazy toad. <laughs> you like that? Bollinger's lazy toads live 17,290 feet high, or 5,270 meters, in Guru Dongmar Lake in India. One giant leap. Growing up to 6 inches or 15 centimeters, American bullfrogs can leap 20 times their own body length, often pouncing on prey such as insects, fish, and even snakes. They live in freshwater ponds, lakes, and marshes in parts of North America. There he goes, the American bullfrog, the largest frog in North America. It can leap 20 times its body length. first amphibian is the mud puppy. Salamanders are amphibians shaped like lizards, with long tails and short legs. The mud puppy is a salamander that lives on river and lake beds in North America. They get their unusual name because it was once thought they barked like a dog, but in fact their sound is more like a squeak. Let's look at this little box first. See, it's organs for breathing. During their life cycle, most amphibians go through a big change called metamorphosis, where their aquatic larva turns into an air-breathing adult. But in some salamanders, such as the mud puppy, this process is incomplete. The adults keep their gills, allowing them to continue breathing underwater. Let's look at its anatomy first. 
goofy looking guy. There's his external gills. Mud puppies have external gills, which means they stick out from the body rather than being hidden under gill flaps. They are bright red because they are filled with blood to pick up oxygen from the surrounding water. Their colored skin. Most mud puppies are brownish in color with darker patches that may help with camouflage on riverbeds. Let's check out this mud puppy map. It says Lake Living. The common mud puppy is one of eight species of mud puppies found in the wettest parts of the United States and Canada, mainly in the Great Lakes and the rivers that flow from them. It lurks around among the mud and silt, hiding during the day and emerging at night to feed. The Swamp Dweller In the warm, wet swamps of southern Louisiana, Many mud puppies are yellower than elsewhere in the U.S., and youngsters often venture out of water into woodland leaf litter. The Mountain Mud Puppy In the Appalachian Mountains, mud puppies live in highland streams that run through forests. They stay active even in winter, sometimes swimming beneath ice. The Great Lake Gills help mud puppies stay underwater longer than other salamanders. In big lakes, they can go as deep as 88 feet, 27 meters below the surface, to hunt for aquatic invertebrates and the occasional small fish. Finding a mate. In the northernmost parts of their range, mud puppies may mate in fall. Females store the male sperm in their bodies before laying fertilized eggs the following summer when there's more food. I think I got all the little things on the map here. Yeah, let me read the little facts. It says there are more than 760 salamander species in the world. And like all other amphibians, mud puppies take in some oxygen directly through their skin. And over here, we have a list of some other salamanders. We've got the Japanese giant salamander. This is one of the biggest amphibians, up to four and a half feet, 1.4 meters long. It lives in cold mountain streams and gets almost all its oxygen directly through its wrinkled skin. The Amphioma, only found in North America. This aquatic salamander, with its tiny limbs and eel-like body, has both gills and lungs, but the gills are hidden under flaps of skin. The mushroom-tongued salamander. Look how pretty this one is. What a color. This tiny salamander is one of nearly 500 species from the Central American tropics that lack lungs and breathe only through their skin. The fire salamander. This air-breathing salamander from European forests is unusual in giving birth to live young as aquatic larvae rather than laying eggs. And the great crested newt. Look at that crest. Newts are land salamanders that return to water to breed, changing their appearance by developing smoother skin and tail fins. It's really interesting, I think. All right. Next, we have a mossy frog, it says. Let's read this fact and then we'll look at the picture. The Vietnamese mossy frog lives in the rainforest-covered mountains of northern Vietnam. Its mottled green skin, covered in bumps and ridges, blends in with the wet moss that lines the riverbanks and caves of the frog's forest habitat. It breeds in water-filled tree holes, laying its eggs above the waterline, safe from predators below. Look at this guy. My goodness. He's all bumpy. His beautiful eyes, huh? That's a really cool frog. Oh, but these ones are sweet. Look at them. <laughs> It's the strawberry poison frog. Most amphibians rely on poisons to defend themselves. Glands in their skin ooze chemicals that can be irritating or even deadly. The 
strawberry poison frog from Central America excels at defending itself in this way and warns off enemies with its bright colors. Let's start down here with the boxes. Oops. Small desk, I'm sorry. Doing my best here. Plant pool. Oh, cute. If you can't tell, I really like frogs. Strawberry poison frogs are careful parents. They lay their eggs on forest leaves. When they hatch, the tadpoles are carried on the mother's back to a pool of water in a bromeliad plant where they turn into frogs. It's neat. The color varieties. The strawberry poison frog comes in more than 100 different colored varieties called morphs. Most of these varieties occur on tiny islands off the Central American coast where frogs are cut off from those on the mainland. They have different colors because their populations have been separated for thousands of years and have evolved to look different. Very, very different. Like they're all very unique, huh? Let's look at the little anatomy section over here. It says poison skin. Look at their eyes, so cute. The skin is moistened by secretions from two types of glands. One produces mucus and makes it slimy. The other oozes poison that tastes repulsive to predators. And let's check out the map. It says Rainforest Frog. Mountains running through Central America keep many different lowland animal species apart on either side. The strawberry poison frog lives in the eastern forest along the Caribbean coast. These frogs are small. Adults are only about three-fourths of an inch or two centimeters long. Most are bright red with blue or black legs, but in some places colors vary. We looked at before. Alright, let's see their range here on the map. It says northern range. The strawberry poison frog reaches as far north as southeastern Nicaragua. The frogs here may have more purplish colored legs and a few black spots on their back. Calling out. Strawberry frogs live on plants near the forest floor. The males use their low buzzing call to defend their tiny territories and attract females. Coastal frogs. The densest populations of frogs occur in the wet lowland rainforest that hugs the Caribbean coasts. Frogs here hop along the ground and occasionally climb into low vegetation. Blue jeans. Most strawberry poison frogs have red bodies and blue legs, earning them the nickname blue jeans frogs. In the south of their range, some mainland frogs are grayish or yellow. Island frogs. You see the islands there. The tiny islands of Bocas del Toro off the Caribbean coast of Panama are home to many different colors of strawberry poison frogs. And it says to check out the panel down here to see them all. Right, let's see the little facts over here. It says this frog gets its poison from the ants it eats. Wow. And there are 200 species of poison frogs in the Americas. Wow. And lastly, tonight, we have Mr. Toad, the common toad. Amphibians need moisture to survive, but some are tolerant of a range of different habitats. The common toad, one of more than 600 toad species across the world, is the most widespread in Europe. It lives equally well in forests, alpine meadows, and dry sand dunes. Start with the boxes. It says breeding pools. Oh no. my goodness. <laughs> like most amphibians, toads lay their eggs in pools of water. The female common toad lays her eggs in two long strings, each up to 16 feet or 5 meters long. The eggs will hatch into aquatic larvae or tadpoles. And mass migration. Look at them go. Each springtime, large numbers of common toads emerge from hibernation and travel to their breeding pools, 
In some places, special toad crossing tunnels have been built to help them cross roads safely. Awesome. Let's look at this. Ooh, down here he's eating a little spider. So I apologize if that makes you uneasy, but he's going to eat it. <laughs> Bulging eye. The large eyes of a common toad give it good night vision. Common toads are most active at night, using the cover of darkness to hunt for prey. Sorry if you can hear my chair squeaking. Okay. I hope that sounds alright. It's usually not that squeaky anymore, but here we are. Tongue attack. The toad catches invertebrate prey, such as slugs, snails, and spiders. With a long, sticky tip its tongue that shoots out of its mouth at lightning speed. Let's look at the map. It says, Temperate Belt. The common toad is found throughout much of Europe in the temperate belt south of the cold polar regions and north of hotter Africa and Asia. It lives most of its life away from water, hiding in damp, shady places, returning to the water only to breathe see what we've got over here. <laughs> Look at this guy. Defensive posture. He's ready to fight. And toads have poison glands in their skin to deter predators, but when threatened will stretch their legs and arch their back to look bigger for extra defense. On the move. Common toads hibernate in winter, in mud burrows or beneath piles of logs or leaves. When spring comes, they travel overland back to the same ponds in which they were spawned in order to breed. Leaping high. Common toads generally move slowly and prefer to walk rather than jump, but if danger threatens, they can leap to safety. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mating toads. When mating in ponds, the male toad grabs the larger female round the waist just behind her front legs and then fertilizes the strings of eggs as they are released into the water. And, oh, that's it. It's <laughs> going All right. Lastly, our little fact down here is that each egg string laid by a female common toad can contain up to 8,000 eggs. So, that's going to be it for tonight. Amphibians are some strange little creatures, aren't they? I think they're awesome. Except those Caecilians, those are a little weird. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a good, 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 good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.